Welcome to Tutors of Life podcast where we research life so you don't have to. Episode 230. This is your host, Sean Tudor. And this is him. This is the talk episode where the tutors talk. Love it. Yeah. What you got? What do we got? What are we chatting about? What's new in your life, babe? Dude, Sarai's the city. I'm dying. It's not good. No. It's not good at all. No. So ignore my very greasy hair. Dude, I've been putting olive oil on my scalp. Oh, fuck. It just gets so gross. That is disgusting. Mm-hmm. It's the only thing that, like, relieves the itch. God, that's fucked. Yep. <sighs> yep. It's been really bad. Um, it always gets worse during the wintertime, but, like, this is the worst it's ever gotten, I would say. Um, and it, like, boom. It was very fast. Instant. Yep. It was like, whoa. Next day, flared. Like, yep. as soon as the season started changing, boom, bad. Yep, it, like, doubled. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go probably to a dermatologist and see what they can do. Yeah, big idea. Yeah. Have you scheduled an appointment yet? No, I haven't. That'd be smart. Yep. Because they're probably going to be a couple weeks out. Yep. So, yeah, I'm being strict on my diet. I'm not... You're going to be strict on your diet. I had, besides the sliders, I haven't done anything I'm not supposed to, like, I wasn't on 75 hard. It's the only thing that, and that has brown sugar in it, still not good sugar, but. Right. You ever think of my triggers are sugar and alcohol, so I probably won't drink at the wedding this weekend, and I'm avoiding sugars, so it's joyful. Yeah, so I'm actually not giving a fuck. Thanks. Love that. For me, I'm just saying, like, on my diet. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. I care for you, and I'm like, hey, babe, I'm here to support you, but I'm going to eat my chocolate, and I'm going to drink a high noon, mm -hmm. and I'm going to smoke cigars. Yep. But uh, I am here emotionally I for you. really appreciate that so much. So, yeah, that's my fun update, I guess. Uh, just dying. It's okay. <laughs> That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I honestly don't think there's really anything else. Damn. Get your blog in Tuesday? Nope. Damn. I did. Are you. Is yours going to be done for tomorrow? I'm doing it in the morning when I get up. God, I love you. It's what I do. Mm -hmm. It's what I do. Probably. So, thank you. I know I thought about it while I was editing videos today. I was like, probably should write that blog for yesterday. Yeah, this is Wednesday night, by the way, folks. Yep. Um, I'm reading right now uh, the second book in the Dopamine Detox series. It's called, like, Action Steps or Action something. Uh, it's basically about how to <laughs> counteract uh, procrastination. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I already discussed this because I failed day one, like, three days in a row. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trudging along and just keep reading the book and... Yeah, yeah, it, it's given me lots of good pointers of how to combat it. Um, so I'm going to start working on that. Uh huh. I will. I'm determined. I'll All do right, it. Babe. Yeah. I got faith. Mm hmm. I got faith. All that right. Faith says otherwise. Let me tell you the, the number one thing for me. Mm hmm. It is getting up to train. Yeah. That's it, dude. Like, that will seriously set the tone for the rest of my day is whether I get my lazy ass out of bed at 5.30 a.m. or not. Mm -hmm. That's it, dude. Like, once, like, last night, a little Cheech and Chong, mm -hmm. smack down a bunch of sliders, go shopping, order some cigars, out by 8.30, up at 5.30, mm -hmm. feeling like ass, but went downstairs and started on my exercises. That is, like, that is the win. Mm -hmm. That gets me going. Mm -hmm. And as soon as that's done, I'm like, okay, I'm ready for the day. And, like, yesterday, same shit. I get up, but yesterday I, like, got up. And I, like, did shit in the morning knowing that I'd be to the gym by 7. Yeah. 
So I got up, did a few things, drank some coffee, had a piece of toast to the gym training by seven. That, like, dude, so huge. So huge. Yeah. I, yeah, I need to. I need to start. I know I need to start. It's the, it's the, because when we were on 75 hard, Mm -hmm. you did that every morning. Mm -hmm. And how great did you feel? So good. It's something about, like, kicking that fucking bedtime shit like it's something about getting up when you're supposed to get up mm-hmm. no snooze is just getting up and getting after it dude you've already get, gotten so much shit done by 7 8 a.m it's mm-hmm. stupid and they say too like one of the first things you should do when you get up is go outside oh it is yeah you're supposed to go outside for and sure. so i do kind of miss that about 75 hard was like because I literally would just roll out of bed, go put clothes on, put my shoes on, and we were out the door within two minutes of waking up. Five minutes, but yeah, you're right. And so that really helped, like, clear your mind and just, like... And Sean and I are very... Our brains don't relax. So our, like, first ten minutes would be us being qu- kind of quiet. And then after that, we would just start rolling. Mm-hmm. And I think that's kind of where we, like, came up with some of our really good shit was um, during those walks. Yeah, but someone doesn't want to get up. I know. I'm thinking about doing phase one. When? Oh, our trip is coming up. Bro, we leave on vacay in two weeks. Yeah. And that's going to be impossible. It's not impossible, but, like, that would defeat the purpose of going and enjoying vacay. Yeah. Because it'd be like, hey, this winery we can't drink at. Mm. I mean, I didn't pick out, I haven't picked out any. Zero alcohol, one brewery. One brewery, that's it. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly, like vacation like that for me is a lot less alcohol. I barely, like barely drink. It's a lot more of the uh, breakfast. Yeah. It's honestly, it's not even lunches. It's not dinners. It's nothing like that. It's not even the snacks. It's a breakfast. When I'm on vacation, I get a Danish every fucking morning for breakfast, and I do not give a fuck. Breakfast and coffee shops. That's it, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, the rest of the day, I'll be good, but I'm telling you what, dude, when I'm on vacay, you best fucking believe I'm getting a Danish or a donut or something, a scone for breakfast. Fuck you. I don't care. Mm, I really should start picking out some breakfast spots for us. Dude, God, there's nothing Better than that. Mm -hmm. I thought about it today. I was thinking about that uh, place in the Czech Republic where we'd walk Mm -hmm. up to that guy, we'd get our espresso, Mm -hmm. and then he'd make that little panini thing that had like the chili in it. Remember that one? That little joint that guy would come down from upstairs in his apartment. He'd come down and he'd pull out his cooker. And that that, like cheese breakfast thing had like chili in it. He'd pull Mm -hmm. like chili in it. And then... um. He had those cream puffs. Yeah. And so I'd eat my ch- I'd eat my sandwich. I'd have my well, I would while I was waiting for my sandwich to cool down, I'd eat my cream puff, sip on my coffee, eat my sandwich. <sighs> Dude, this morning I was just reminiscing about mm-hmm. that. Man, that's so, that was so good. Dude, I No offense to food places in the US. They suck. Compared to everywhere Bro, that we went. Oh. There's shit. Remember in um, uh, Frankfurt, Germany? That lady Little, we walked yes. down to every morning? Oh. Come on. She was such a sweetheart. So nice. Croissants every morning. Fucking never felt like shit. Mm-hmm. And she's just like, you guys are back. Mm-hmm. And we're like, yep. yep. Well, because we were, we were in an Airbnb, and it was, like, on the outskirts of town. So it was, like, all locals that went there. So I'm sure they were so confused why there was two Americans there. For three mornings in a row. Yeah. Yeah. God, that place was great. Mm-hmm. I think we went there four times in three days. Yeah, we did. Because yep. we went there twice in one day. Yeah, we did. Yep. God, I love that place. Yeah, that place was dope. And then um, I just think of the pierogies. The pierogies were so good. I don't know. The pierogies were good when we went out to dinner at that nice sit-down restaurant. Yes. God damn it, dude. Oh, I was thinking about the goulash. um, Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, dude. Let's go back. Yeah. Oh, my God. 
I freaking love it over there. Mm -hmm. God, I could seriously do a Poland check vacay again. Yeah. In a fucking heartbeat, I'd do a Poland check vacay yeah, again. You haven't been to like Italy yet? You're going to love Italy. I, it's going to be great. Yeah. I, I, I know like... I know that shit's going to be super cool and I'm looking forward to it, but man, I just know what I love and I know I'd love going back, but it'll be good to go to other places. Mm -hmm. I honestly like this trip we're going to make out, this East Coast trip, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, but like you and I ran through the budget of it. It's cheaper for us to go to Europe. Yeah, it really is. I'm like, dude, this is dumb. Mm -hmm. At least like the trip that we like did the a Poland year ago. Like the Poland areas, yeah. Not the, if we were to go just straight to Germany no yeah no but yeah. yeah no it's it's pretty crazy hey did you hear about the little italian island uh palma mallorca i don't know Seven thousand refugees showed up oh i don't know so there's a little italian island there's six thousand people that live on it which my phone mm -hmm. six thousand people that live on this island a boat with seven thousand refugees showed up Ooh. and they're like we don't know what to do like this is gonna crush our civilization like what do what do we do and um the eu is like well it's kind of your your game it's your problem like you're a part of the eu so you, we're all getting refugees so do you like dude Dang. over double the population how on a little island how are you going to import that much how are you gonna you don't have the housing for that you don't have the infrastructure for that you don't have the food the resources etc and now you some like dude send them home get them out of there i yeah. think i think they are relocating like i think a good majority like five thousand of them are like getting relocated mm. but still dude like so lampedusa okay um 112 miles off the coast of tons tunisia tunisia yeah. yeah um so it's closer to north africa than it is to italy mm. so it's so close that it's becoming a landing place for migrants who are desperate to enter europe Last week, more than 10,000 migrants made the incredible dangerous journey to Lampedusa, creating yet another migration crisis for which Italy and more broadly Europe are not prepared. Bro, 10,000? I thought it was seven. Ten. Holy fuck. Mm -hmm. Dude, so that would be like, okay, keep that in mind. That would be like here in the United States with 330 million people. Mm -hmm. That'd be like 400 million people showing up tomorrow. Huh. Mm -hmm. What would you do? Right? Kill them all. That's all you can do. EU pledges return of migrants from overwhelmed it Italian island amid call for naval blockade. Whoo. Mm. There's actually a few, uh, like, turkeys trying to get out of the EU right now. Um, some some place are trying to get out of the EU because they're sick of this shit. Mm -hmm. They don't want to be a part of it anymore. I mean, you got to think about Brexit in the UK. Like, get us the fuck out of this. I mean, there's yeah. a reason they did it. Yeah, I mean, it's going to hurt hurt them for a little bit, but then it's going to be so much Ooh. better. Um, Turkey? N countries in general. It hurts yeah. a little. I think it'll hurt the EU even more. Eventually, once so many people back out, yeah. Yeah, because it'll it'll really, like, be a, a negative thing on their image. Mm -hmm. um, um, no, I'm curious, like, if they're going to actually make them go back or not. That's so shitty. Uh -huh. Dude, I forgot that they have a right-winged prime minister right now, too. Oh, he's probably pissed. She. Oh. Remember? It's the, the fascist. fascist. Yep. Damn, what's her name? Um, prime minister. I'm going to I'm going to um uh, butcher this. Uh It's Georgia. Gior Georgia Maloney. Georgia? Um, Prime Minister Georgia Maloney. Yep. That's who Georgia, right? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so she's putting in stricter measures. Good. Good uh, for her. Oh, she, and so she's calling for the naval blockade of North Africa to prevent migrants on smugglers' boats from departing. Sick. That's cool. Sick. Good for her. Mm. Get them out of there. Hell yeah, man. She has a 10-point plan. Good for her. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. As part of a deal with the EU to block departures in exchange for aid, helping Italy accelerate asylum requests and setting up human... Oh, so they're not. Um, oh, wait. Setting up humanitarian corridors in countries of origin to discourage illegal routes. Oh, because that's an illegal route to get into Europe. Got it. Mm -hmm. So interesting mm -hmm. 
Could you imagine seven, ten thousand people showing up <laughs> to your island? Mm-hmm. I mean, granted, we have that over that cross every single day at the southern border. Yeah, but it's just so like, dude. There's been like, there's been like ten million people over the last three years that have crossed the southern border. Yeah, and there's like they just uh, Dan was just telling me that they like stopped a bus or a train or something with like thousands of um immigrants on it and there was like a lot of wanted yeah most, prisoners on them yeah most like a good uh, a good majority of them mm-hmm. are middle aged men who have criminal like are terrorists yeah. criminal backgrounds whatever and they're just like at, at least that one was stopped right okay but how many of the other 10 million was that right. a lot they said there's a bunch of chinese um foreigners russian foreigners all those people because if you can cross the border yeah cross it yeah you know what i'm saying but we got someone in office who doesn't give a fuck well yeah i mean they're probably just gonna um let them keep coming in and hope for a big terrorist invasion so then we can't have the 2024 election or by all those people being in to have them vote and true and then um so it swings the election yeah crazy dude yeah i just Here's the shitty thing, right? So we have all these people flooding to first world countries. Yeah. At at some point, a lot of these countries, especially the European ones, they're going to become too overpopulated. So, like, at some point, we need to fucking kick them back to where where they came from. And we have to, like, something has to start happening in these countries where these people are fleeing from. Otherwise, they're going to turn to third world countries. Right. Everywhere will. Everywhere will. So at some point, like, the first world countries are going to have to band together to start fixing up these third world countries. So or just send to. them back and not worry about them. Let them do their own thing. Keep they're the gonna border keep up. Trying to, they're going to keep trying to flee. Not if you put a border up. Okay, but how do you put a border up in the middle of the ocean? Ships. Mm-hmm. With firepower. Pirates. No, 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 like, no, 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 I'm just saying, like, on your coast, you can shoot down all the ships. Yeah. You have illegal ships coming in that didn't get approval, gone. Yeah. You know how many more illegal ships would show up after the first five get shot and blown up? That's true. Zero more. Yeah. Because they'll be like, hey, if we go that way, we die. Yeah. So we're done doing that. Yeah. It's like that's what's supposed to happen with laws crazy right like if a criminal gets charged for something crazy repercussions mm. dude okay hold on get this dude from our motel mm-hmm. goes to jail supposed to be in jail through december mm-hmm. he's already out no charges what one of two things right one he could be a rat and snitch someone else out to like get out of trouble right that's always an option yeah but two i'm just like And before he was on an ankle monitor, no ankle monitor anymore. No charge, no ankle monitor, out of jail. I'm just like, dude. Are you even trying to keep these people in? That's what I'm saying. I was just like, I guess I understand if you cut him a deal because he rat on someone or whatever. But I was like, more likely than not, like, who does this guy have to rat on? Right. Also, Um, like, then there's like my poor cousin. Oh, dude. Who That judge was just like, I have to make an example of you. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wild. Dude, this this judicial system's fucked. Everyone knows that. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's move on. Okay. What do you want to start with? All right, guys. This morning, something happened that made me think a lot. Mm-hmm. I have one minute on Instagram. Mm-hmm. You have the, one minute? Yeah. Like, your timer is one minute. Yeah. I love that. Okay. Hermosi pops up right away. I got one minute with him. Listen to him. It was it was about scaling and how uh, he was talking about a barber shop mm-hmm. and his friend was like, "Hey, I'm thinking of selling um, this thing at my barber shop like vintage vintage clothes or something at his barber shop. What do you think of that?" And uh, Hermosi's like, "Okay, well." you know, what's your goal? What are you What are you looking for? And the guy's like, well, you know, my goal is to get more income besides just like me, whatever. So the guy, when it was just himself with his one chair, that was his only income. Then he added another chair. That was bringing 50% of income. 
And so Hermosi's like, why don't instead of doing this vintage like clothing line and all this shit, you take your time to replace yourself with that chair, your chair, replace yourself out of your chair. Now you're getting paid the same amount, but like, you know what I'm saying? The same amount's coming in. Obviously, you're not getting paid the same amount. Yeah. But then you take that that energy you had from cutting hair and you just replicate that same barbershop over again. Now you have two barbershops, four barbers renting chairs from you. You're making more money than when you were just cutting hair by yourself. And you say you just have two locations. Mm-hmm. Now you don't even have to work besides like overseeing. Um, you're renting out your chairs and you're making more money. And he's like, you keep it simple. Offer like the minimal offering you can offer. Not Don't add a bunch of shit. And that's how you scale. That's like how you can, and, and that makes a lot of sense because I listened to some of Hermosi's shit about how like he came on to like certain companies mm-hmm. that had one, two, three locations, and within sixteen months they had twenty locations. But it's because he just took whatever they had, threw out all the excess bullshit, the eighty twenty rule, you yeah. know, eighty twenty rule, throw out the excess bullshit and just replicate, 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 and just. P- expanded out that's cool wild very wild i don't this is the one thing that like i don't understand with that right so i totally understand that it makes a lot of sense we've talked to so many fucking people about it it makes all the sense in the world Mm -hmm. focus on your 80 percent uh focus on your 20 percent of offerings that gave you 80 percent of the income yeah okay i'm i'm with you i'm following it how do you expand to multiple locations just doing that right my thing is is like i understand how to have one or two locations in eau claire Mm -hmm. how do i do that in like rice lake how do i do that adding it in lacrosse how do i do that adding it in wasa how do i do that adding it in menominee you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. like how do you replicate that how do you expand to all these places and all these things it also just confuses me because like so what if it's something i'm trying to think of a good business example that we could use um so like i guess like we could do like tub glazing why not yeah okay go ahead so that's obviously something that like there's a need for it Mm mm-hmm Right, people want their tubs reglazed because, like, some of them you can't replace. Right. Um, we found that out from Ryan's properties. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, whatever, like, right, you can, you only offer tub glazing. Okay. Okay, well, that only gets you, I feel like that only gets you so far. So, yes, like, you can just do tub glazing, start one in Eau Claire, have one in La Crosse, have one in Wasa, right? But there's also a market for, countertop reglazing Mm -hmm. so do you start a different business of just countertop reglazing or do you hire like a whole new person to do just that so then you off you can offer tub reglazing and countertop reglazing do you do you see what i'm saying Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because like if there's a market for something else that's similar why wouldn't you offer that as well I think it has to do with like get the eighty twenty skill set. Okay. Or maybe like getting out of your target market. Maybe that's a complete different market. You know, I don't know. Maybe the tub reglazing is mostly commercial stuff mm-hmm. and a little bit working with the end customer, where countertop reglazing is all customer. So maybe the marketing becomes a huge different portion that you got to do a lot more marketing. Okay. Yeah. Um. That'd be like one way I could see why that could be an issue. Mm-hmm. Um, the other issue, right, is like skill set, maybe like the training on it, having the materials on hand, etc. Yeah. Um, but so, if you find that there is a market for it, do you start just a whole new business then for just countertop reglazing? I don't know. I've been trying to think Figure about that. Out? that. Okay. I think I need to talk to people smarter than me. Yeah. Because that's my only thing is like. The business we've been discussing, Mm -hmm. like, there are definitely other services that could be offered that I think are very good potential. But we want to obviously try to keep it 
smaller and more refined. So I think, like, I mentioned to you earlier, like, well, what if we hired a person just specifically to do that? Right. I think you could add that as offerings mm -hmm. and see how it goes at, like, one location. And if it works, then add it at the other locations. Mm -hmm. Almost have, like, a trial location. But I think to get started and get that income coming, you want it as simple and as repeatable as possible. Yeah. Um, like the owner of festival festival yeah said he only has one one store wait he only owns one yeah because they're all the same yep they are yes they are it's the same thing with quick trip mm -hmm. there's only one quick trip every fucking one you walk in is the goddamn same except the tobacco ones but they're also not quick trips actually they're not named quick trips they're named tobacco outlets. Correct. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So there's only one quick trip. Yep. Um, that would actually make sense because you have to think at one quick trip, they had to start serving hot food. And saw how it went. Now all of them serve hot food. Uh-huh. And I'm sure they started selling milk at just one. Mm -hmm. Saw how that went and they go, oh, now we can push this out to all of our other quick trips and now we're going to buy a farm and we're going to start uh, farming mm. for our own milk. Yeah. Same thing with butter. Same thing with offering all their meats that they offer now in their cold. Do you remember? Ten, do you remember ten years ago? Mm -hmm. Keep on this thought. Ten years ago, when you went into a quick trip, mm -hmm. what they have? Minimal hot food. Yeah. Minimal. Like the roller bites and like roller bites and like a couple breakfast sandwiches some, and the chicken sandwich. The really shitty chicken sandwiches. Yeah, dude. Like chicken patty. Sandwiches. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. That's it, dude. That's mm -hmm. it. And they didn't have the meat department. The meat department didn't come about until eight years ago, yeah. at least in Eau Claire. Yeah. And they were small. And they were it was small. It was mostly just like you could get like some, uh, the bacon wrap fillets and a, a couple pounds of hamburger. Oh, no. I'm saying like the stores in general the were The stores really in general were small. So like the one on Bracket. Yeah. That one used to have a Jimmy John's attached to it. Yes. Yep. And they kicked the Jimmy John's out to expand. Yep. The one in Altoona has expanded. Yes. They built backwards. Um, okay. Mm-hmm built back yeah yeah um because now they build build them a lot bigger yeah oh because now they know what actually sells and shit in them mm. and then i'm sure down the line like you know they're gonna keep this up and they're gonna find other things that work in them that they're gonna add and whatever yeah but like dude if you think about so this is this is kind of going on the same thing yes there's more to offer and we know there's more to offer but it's a completely different marketing set for mm -hmm. a lot of it yeah and so do you just set up your businesses and set up blah, 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 getting getting them all set up for the next three to five years, mm -hmm. then start adding those other services as you find ones that work well. Right. And I suppose like, so probably scale it first, right? So mm -hmm. like have multiple places and then expand. Right. Yeah, because then I suppose like if you have one store offering the extra stuff, so the hot foods, right? You just have to make sure that you have the staff for the hot foods and that there's other things they can do if there's not hot food right. stuff to do. Yep. And you also got to think about it this way, right? So if they didn't, if they didn't grow how they did and expand all these areas and set up all these things, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have had the income to expand. expand all these, right? Because they would have just done one business and it would have taken them... Um, Eight years to figure out all this shit that they offer that works. Mm -hmm. At which point they've made like barely any money, mm -hmm. maybe a couple hundred grand a year at best, instead of getting a minimal viable product, pushing out your minimal viable product. Holy fuck, dude. Holy man. Your MVP, minimal, vi minimal viable product. That was shit we talked about in college all the time. And I have not used that word until now. From 2018. I have not, never heard of that, so cool. Whoa, dude. Anyways, continue. School coming back to me, babe. Dude, this is going to be an hour-long podcast. Oh, it's going to be fucked. So you get your minimal viable product, and you push it out, and you start making a hundred grand on each location, mm -hmm. and you're bringing all that money in to give you a lot more research and development at your main location, da 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 da, -da. As you do that, boom, now you can... Add that as you figure out what works. But that whole time, instead of spending eight years trying to figure it all out, you start expanding right away and had all that income coming in for the last eight years. Mm -hmm. So now you've got millions and millions to fucking push all this shit out with. Yeah. So 
that when you think about like that and and so we talked about that with like um uh, Mad City. Yeah. Uh, Mad City's got the bathroom refinishes and you, Window World. You know the places that just picked something and stuck with it and went. Mm-hmm. Like, there's Mad Cities all over the place. Yeah. There's and and we we have a friend. Um, we've got a friend uh, Dan who lives in La Crosse that has um a kitchen a kitchen and bat a kitchen and bathroom, um mostly just kitchens but they do do some bathrooms too. They're part of a franchise. That's what they do. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, when you think about that, how replicable is just redoing kitchens only? Right. Dude, come on. So, yeah. it's interesting. Minimal viable product, then add. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um, we th- we're thinking about acquiring some businesses. Maybe. Maybe. We're thinking about it. It's in our discussions. Yeah. We're trying to figure out how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And if that's like... Uh, if we do it we got to go for scale yeah i think mm-hmm. and we got to be smart with it and yeah and that kind of shit. we're trying to not have to set things up multiple times and have to go back and fix things because it seems to be a running theme for us <laughs> is we like do something just kind of like very fast and quick and then we're like shit we actually wanted to do it this way right so we're trying to like think things through before we take the step because, like, we're still operating. We're yes. still running business. We're still bringing income. The big thing is right now is, like, just spending a little more time talking with some people, talking with our attorney, things like that, to set it up so that we move forward properly. Mm-hmm. And that way it makes everything we do that much easier and we're not changing shit halfway through. Yeah. We're not, like, five years into this and we're like, oh, shit. We have to go back and do right. all of this stuff instead. Right. So that's going to be interesting. Yeah, for sure. It, it's going to be cool to see because we're in a good spot now and we have an idea of what our skill sets are. Mm-hmm. So we could set up kind of what, what we can offer, what our offering would be, yeah, and how we'd move forward with that. Um, obviously, we would just start mainly with tutor transformations. That would be the, the main one. Yeah. And then possibly adding this other business we're looking at. Um, and really, I mean, we will be putting so much focus into to getting those built up that you know we might not even add another business for five years but to be able to have it all set up right yeah and not have to second guess and just know you know what we have to do what we have to do do and if it comes across we're we're able to acquire yeah you know and that's the big thing if it comes across we're able to acquire yeah so yeah it's it's so right now we're just trying to figure out how to structure that and i'm not sure and i'm not sure who to even talk to about that honestly yeah because we don't really know a whole lot of people that have like bought a lot of businesses like we know people that have bought businesses but they've bought only one yeah we could talk to steve steve Mm die yeah that'd be a good one it's a good idea yeah write that down in the notes yeah it's a good idea we could chat with him he would have i'm sure he'd have a few good ideas for us Mm. yeah it's also just so hard because like sean and i are very much a team if you guys haven't noticed um we both have our skill sets and together they work really well Mm -hmm. um yeah. And so kind of for us to be successful, you need both of us. Right. For sure. Yeah. Because here's the deal. People think I'm like, people think I get shit done. I don't even get to, I just come up with the ideas and mm-hmm. you do them. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm like, oh, this is what we, this would make sense. And then you like implement them. Yep. I don't fucking. John doesn't think, know how to do shit. I, no, 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 no. I know how to do it. I don't do it. Yeah. That's just how it goes. I always delegate it. You do always delegate it. And you're like good at it. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense. And then once you systemize it, then we can pass it on. Mm-hmm. But I'm uh, just, I know how to do it. I built systems before, but I don't build them as good. I'm thinking like, uh, yeah, like how I make like the manuals and the spreadsheets and shit. Like, yeah. But the, you're not nearly as good as No, I building am. all the systems of it. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, no, no. I can do it. I've done it for yeah. years. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can is it, do it. Is it quality? No. No. Does it get the job done? Yes. But do we want it to be good? That's yes. why we got you. Yeah. So, yeah, that's – we're going to spend some time thinking about that. I'm yeah. I'm going to set that up right just so we move, we're moving forward. We're moving forward as a team, and we're really making this shit work so that way whoever we're doing business with, they get the best – Products from The us. best team they can get. Yeah. You know, the best – yeah 
So we'll see how that kind of plays out. Mm-hmm. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. So. Yeah, I have. A f- we have a pretty good guess of how it's going to go, but we also don't know if we should just go a different route for now, just to make our lives easier. Yeah. But we'll find know. out. We're gonna see. Mm-hmm. But I do think about it like this. Um, there's very much, and this is, I mean, there's very much the route of like building your one bridge and building your bridge, and then once your bridge is built, then then you can add lanes. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, that is the same exact concept of scaling with a minimal viable product and then adding offerings as you go. Mm-hmm. That's the exact same thing. Um, but I guess our bridge building could just be like you and I a team on making uh, any making a making a like self-employed small business company a business yeah that could be our like bridge you know what i'm saying and and then go from scale from there we've also talked about this many times is a lot of people say to only focus on one thing only focus on one thing but then who was it someone did say like there's nothing wrong go ahead with what you're saying yeah there's like some people like need more than one thing to focus on. So most people, most people can only focus on one thing Mm. and that's great. Like that's good. That's actually the best quality to have. Yeah. But, um, some people, um, can juggle many projects and the people that can juggle many projects should, and they should buy a bunch of small businesses, et cetera, and do that. And that's what they should do. Yeah. And, um, looking at my personality, I don't ever tend to do only one thing. Yeah. I always do a bunch of little, I do a bunch of shit. And so, and I've always wanted to own a bunch of little businesses. I've always wanted to own businesses. Mm -hmm. So, um, now will I have something as big and crazy as a lot of these guys who only focus on one thing? Absolutely not. Yeah. But then again, that's not my game. Mm -hmm. And so if I play my game, then. Right. Because you've talked about how you don't know if you want to own a big business or not. Yeah. Um, Who the hell was that girl? I'm trying to think of her name. Um, Sanchez, Corey Sanchez, yeah, Cody, yeah, yeah. Cody Sanchez, Cody, yeah. Cody Sanchez. Um, yeah, because she talked about like that's what she does. Yeah, she yeah. buys small businesses. That's yeah. all she does. She's an acquisitions company. Mm. Um, yeah, I, it's. I guess if if you can do it, that's kind of what I've always I've always I shouldn't say always. I'm I'm big on small business and I'm big on on making your business worth something. Mm-hmm. And so maybe that's just what I end up focusing on. Maybe I'm less of the the like very big scale having big companies. Maybe I'm more of just like getting your company. Uh, maybe you got a few locations, but getting your company to like an actual business instead of being self employed, beating your head in the wall, asking yourself every year, should I just go work for someone? Right. Yeah. And I'm so not against self employed guys. I'm so not against self employed. But what I am against is I see so many of these self-employed people half-assing because they, they're they spending all, they're spending, and this is mostly in blue-collar world, they're spending so much time with their quotes, with running their books, trying to do billing, and all while trying to provide a good service. Mm-hmm. Well, if you can just go to work every day and provide the service and have a couple guys working with you, a few guys, a few gals, whatever, working with you, and you got someone on the backside to run the business, get the marketing done, get the billing done right away. We just talked to uh, Corey about it this weekend. Yeah. Um, you have all these things. You're going to be so much happier. You're not going to be working all night long. Mm-hmm. You're going to be able to go to work, provide your best product. You don't have to cut out early for quotes. You don't have to, you know, none of that shit. That's all on the backside. That's already being taken care of for you. You just got to go run your crew and do a good job. Yeah. And you'll make more money. You'll make more money. You'll be happier. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm not against self-employed. I think self-employed is phenomenal if you can juggle it all. Yeah. If that's not your skill set, by all means, partner with someone who can run that back end shit. Yeah, for sure. And owning a business isn't for everyone, too. That's another thing. But we've talked about Fuck. No, it's not. There's so many little things that you don't realize is part of owning a business until you own a business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, dude, honestly, I think a lot of people, when they go self-employed to own a business, what they do is they see what the owner's bringing in. So, like, let's use construction for an example. As a foreman working construction, you're making 35 bucks an hour, roughly. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I, I bet out 75 an hour. And so you see an employee go, well, I can make an extra 40 an hour if I did that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, for sure, buddy. Uh, you got to have all your own tools. You got to have your work truck. You got to have your work trailer. 
Um, insurances. You have to have your insurances. You have license. to have some sort of office spot, your your dwelling license. Um, your then, contractor's license. Yeah, it's your dwelling, dwelling oh, okay. contractor's yeah, license. Yeah, yeah. Um, you have to set up an LLC. You have to uh, make sure you're filing your taxes. You have to do bookkeeping. You have to go do all your own quotes. Um, there is... There are so many layers deep Mm -hmm. and it's just not, you're not just making 75 bucks an hour working eight hours a day. No, now you're trying, you're trying to make $35 an hour once you start tackling in, once you start adding in all these things. You know what I'm saying? You have all this overhead. You got all this extra time you're spending. Now you're working 12 hours a day and you're just trying to make your way back to making fucking 70 grand a year. Mm Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, I could have just stayed with that company, had none of that headache, yep. had four weeks vacation a year, fucking have health care, and, and you're good, you're making 70 a year. Mm-hmm. Instead, you're kicking your dick in every day, don't have health care, don't have any time off. When you're not on the job, you ain't making money. You're right. Um, and you're doing that all because you thought 75 bucks an hour was cool. I'm fucking the the. I was always so self because we've talked about this. Like, can you not get comfortable? No, I just love fucking with shit. Apparently, okay, go ahead. We talked about this so much. We're like, dude, this podcast is gonna be fucking two hours. Yep. All right, so we talked about this so much. We're like, I, I, dude, guys, check it out. Sam brought me home a fucking iced americano at four p.m. and he's still flying high. I'm still there. just fucking dan dan dan. All right, so here we go. Um, when you, th- so, so a lot of people, I used to say this all the time, 200 years ago, 85% of the population was self-employed. Mm-hmm. Those numbers are fucking close guys. Leave me alone if I'm off. All right. So anyways, rough numbers, 200 years ago, 85% of the population was self-employed. So I've always been like huge on yes, be self-employed, yes, be self-employed, da, 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 cool, 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 cool. Dude, we are living in a completely different world. Yeah, they don't. They didn't have taxes that you had to pay quarterly. Exactly. They didn't have unemployment tax. They didn't exactly. have. Yeah, they didn't have any of that shit. Healthcare you had to pay for. Yeah, there's there's so many different things that come in today's day and age that we did not have then. Number one, first and foremost, is taxes. Mm-hmm. You know, slaves, slaves used to get taxed twenty percent. They were considered slaves because they got taxed twenty percent. Like twenty percent of your income was taken. Mm-hmm. Like for some, sla- like some people that were considered slaves, yeah, they would have twenty percent of their um, wages taken, and that was like considered slaves. This is what I like was was reading. Wait, so like as an employer, like twenty percent of your money, or like the money that I paid the slaves, twenty percent of their income. Was yeah, like- yeah. So like the the slaves would have jobs. Yeah. And they'd get paid, but 20% would have to go to their owner. Dang. Oh, the owner would get that 20%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So they, the slaves would still get like 80% of yeah. the pay or whatever. And that was like considered a slave back then. And I'm like, dog, what are we We paying 50%? Yeah. To our owners. We pay 50% to our owners. Yeah. What are we, like ultra slaves? Interesting. Anyways, that was just what I was reading. Who knows if those numbers are even true. I just thought it was super funny. So anyways, it is on the internet. It's probably false. Anyways, next thing. Yeah, because I thought I didn't think slaves got paid. Hey, do you know? I don't know. Who knows? You but know? I figured that's why they were slaves. I never know. Yeah. Oh, so anyways, here's the deal. So, like you just said, we're in, they didn't have health care 200 years ago. No. They didn't have to pay these taxes 200 years ago. Uh, they, they had probably pay some taxes, but not nearly as much as. Right. Well, and how many of them were going on vacation to Europe? Right. They didn't um, really. You know, they weren't going on, you weren't going on vacation. Yeah. What are you going to do? Take your horse back across the fucking town? Right. So you work on a vacation. And you worked to survive. Mm-hmm. You always, you were work, work, working to survive. Yeah. In today's day and age, we just like fucking work 40 hours a week and chill. Yeah. Lazy as fuck. Ordering our Uber Eats. Playing with our weenies. Watching Pornhub. You know, all that shit. And so, I... <laughs> Am actually in the last year I've been changing that the last two years maybe I've been changing my position so much on this mm-hmm. and leaning towards like dude just stay employed yeah we're just in such a different time it's it's not even it, it's so hard to compare anything to two hundred years it's not even we're not even in the same world no not at all so um your mother just called me you should t- 
text her back and see what's up. My mother? Yeah, text her back, see what's up. Oh, okay. She tried calling me on two different things. I don't know, maybe it's important. It might be. Uh, um, Tom Brady. All right, guys. So we did the home always do the scaling. Thank you. Tom Brady, all right, so... PBD, PBD podcast, Patrick Pat David podcast. Oh, she, I bet you she tried calling you. Mm-hmm. you okay? yeah. Patrick Pat David podcast interviewed Tom Brady came out today. This Wednesday. Tom Brady's story is insane. So first and foremost, check out Tom Brady's story. Okay. Like check out the podcast. Listen to Tom Brady's story. Awesome. He also wrote a book. Check it all out. Is she responding? No, no she hasn't looked at it yet. Oh, okay. So, um... If you want, you can step up and give a ring. No, it's okay. Okay. So, Tom Brady, on the PB podcast, here we go. So, he talked about one thing that happened in his sophomore year of college that, that like, changed his picture and his career. And it's so true, and it, like, made me realize. No, just taxes. Sorry. Jesus. Okay. All right. Uh. <laughs> okay. So, his coach. So, um, he was third string quarterback at this time, and the first string quarterback got twenty reps. The second string quarterback got ten reps, and then he got two reps. And he goes to his coach. He goes, "Coach, it's just not fair. It's not fair that these guys get so many more reps than me. How am I supposed to get better by only getting two reps?" And the coach said, "If you're ever going to be good at, if you're ever going to be good at this sport, if you're ever going to be good at anything, you need to quit worrying about your fucking uh, what your teammates get and you don't get, and you need to worry about your two reps." Make your two reps the best two reps they can be if you ever want to get more reps. Mm -hmm. So from that day forward, Tom always used that thought. Anytime anything, he was hit with anything, all he thought was like, do what I can do to the best of my ability. Mm -hmm. And he was always, he said from then on out, he was always not about beating the people in front of him. The people in front of him had nothing to do with him. The people behind him had nothing to do with him. All he did was try to beat himself. So his whole goal, beat the man sorry, beat the man in the mirror mm-hmm. and focus on only the things you can control. Mm-hmm. And so he would focus on the shit he could control. And we've heard this so many times from so many people. Like, don't worry about anything else. Only worry about your controllables. And if you execute on your controllables, all the other shit will fall into place. Mm-hmm. Sure as shit for him, all he did was focus on his reps. Mm -hmm. As he focused on his reps, did those reps to the best of his ability as if he was in a game, then he started getting more reps. And next thing you know, he's a starting quarterback. Yeah. And he's done that his whole career. And it's so true with everything we do. If you focus on your controllables, like getting up at 530, like training right away in the morning, like getting your fucking five critical tasks done. If you can focus on your controllables, what happens, babe? You get shit done. The you harder you work, the luckier you get. Hell yeah. So. Because you got to think too, like, uh, that's one of the main points of my action steps book. You got more water? Yeah, I do. Um, it's like they say, once you start, you just have to start. Because like, you're never going to have motivation to start doing stuff. But once you just force yourself to start, then you'll feel more motivated to keep going 100 percent, and that's that's the same logic right like your your controllable is you just starting so do it let me tell you exactly what that is mm-hmm. ryan and i when we started the group homes we were 21 i was we were 21 years old we were in college and we just made it the rule whenever we weren't at class we were in the library mm-hmm. That was our control. Like, if we weren't in class and we weren't at the gym together, we were in the library. Or Burrito Express. Well, you got to fucking... Got to feed yourself. Got to feed yourself. So when, so if we weren't at Burrito Express, we weren't at the gym, and we weren't at class, we were together in the library. Mm-hmm. Him, me and Ryan were fucking together almost every waking moment. Yeah, you guys were together a lot. We were, like, inseparable. Always together. But we controlled what we could control. We were at the library... And nothing else, like, dude, we, you know, we're at the library, do a purpose. You know, we worked on, first and foremost, we worked on getting stable living before we did schoolwork. Yeah. And so we would work on stable living. And once we got that going, then we would do our schoolwork. And so that's what we did. We did that for six months. No, not even, it was like four months. 
once the four months was up, we submitted all of our shit. Mm-hmm. We were waiting for two months. Mm-hmm. Boom. Because we couldn't control that. Yeah. Once we got it, we did what we could control by being in the library, writing these fucking documents, setting up all this shit for four months. Boom. Submitted all to the state to then it's out of our control. Boom. They come in. We meet with them. Now they're controllable. We tell them straight up our, our shortcomings, all that shit. But what we're here to offer, they they give us a chance. Um, then we go into our next meeting, what we can control. Then mm-hmm. we, we go into um, uh, partnering with a company, mm-hmm. with a care organization. Yep. What can we control? We can control submitting the documents, having our meeting, being open and honest during the meeting. Hey, actually, we don't know what the fucking ISP is. Can you show us? And they're like, how are you guys here? How are you licensed? We don't know. Whatever. Um, get it. Don't hear anything back. Two weeks later, get a phone call. Guys, if you don't take this client, you will never get a call back from us. Don't deal. All right. That's controllable. What can we do? We can take the client. It's not the client we wanted. It's it's not even in the realm of the client we wanted. What do we do? We take because we can control it. Six months, one client only, losing money every month. Just there, putting in the work every fucking day, alternating 24-hour shifts, six months. Then, hey, guys, you proved yourself for six months. You went through the shit. You went through the trenches. Here's two more clients within two weeks. Boom, full house. Now we're making money. Yep. All we did was the shit we could control. Mm-hmm. That's it. And just pushed through it. Just pushed through. Just kept doing the work. Discipline. Kept doing the work. That's it. Mm-hmm. All while... Still making it to our classes, still making it to the gym, putting 24 hour shifts. Still having girlfriends. Still having girlfriends who probably didn't like us very much. It's all, it's all we were doing. Mm-hmm. So that was my favorite thing I took away from that interview, which is so fucking true. Control the controllables. And it's not you versus them, it's you versus yourself. I mean, think about that. Like, think about the podcast, right? This is our controllable. We do this. Twice a week, every single week. Even with 10 followers. Even with 10 followers. Just getting it done. Mm-hmm. Do I listen to some people's podcasts? Episode 300 or episode 50, and I'm just like, holy fuck, dude. We're like just ripping. Mm-hmm. These motherfuckers got millions of followers, and mm-hmm. we're just ripping 230 deep. Yeah. That's what uh, Brock and... Um... Alicia. No. Oh, damn. Yep. Um Brock Rachel and Rachel. Yep. yep. I was thinking Rachel, and for some reason, it just didn't seem to fit. But um, Brock and Rachel. When I was talking to them at Wisco Rio, uh, Brock said he still listens, and mm-hmm. Rachel's like, "Oh, how many episodes have you done?" And I was like, "We're on like two hundred twenty." She's like, "Oh my gosh!" And mm-hmm. I was like, "Yeah, we post twice a week, every single week." Just get it done. Yeah, even on our vacation, we still post it twice a week. Getting it done, babe. Yeah. That's it. Did you start downloading the shit on your... Oh, no, I haven't. I gotta do that. All right. What else on that list? Um, Controlling your controllables. Worry about yourself and doing better than yourself. Um, Sticking to your word. All right, cool. guys. Check it out. This I've heard more than I haven't. This is in the construction realm I'm talking about. <laughs> when you set a quote, try to stick to that quote. Mm-hmm. If there's something you fucked up, make it aware and and like, you know, whatever. Ask for forgiveness. Ask if you could change whatever. I remember we were doing one job for someone and um, uh, what is it? We didn't change our labor. So here's the, this is what happened. We... We measured our shit, mm-hmm. um, and we got all of our casing right. No, we got our base right, and we got like half the ca- somehow. When we okay, this is what it was. This is what it was. When we did our order for materials, Menards was out of stock with half the casing. Mm. So when we put the order in, we were missing half the casing. And so like we were putting together the quote and um and we forgot to add in the other half of the casing from the other store. Oh yeah. So when we did our when we sent the quote to the guy, the guy's like, "Yep, good to go." And um and we get there and we get all the material and we're like, "We are s- severely short." 
So we do that, whatever, get all through that, and we look and we realize what happened. We reach back out to to the um, customer and we go, "Hey, we're not changing our we're not changing our labor, anything like that." We gave you the quote that it's this. This is what happened. We messed up. There's actually this much more money in casing, and the guy's like, "Oh, that makes sense. Um, I'll cover that. No big deal." Okay. But where I'm getting with this is this. I've heard of so many people who go into a job, and I've dealt with contractors so many times that have fucking done this. They'll say, "Hey, this is going to cost me X, right? Just let's just let's just say it's something simple. This is going to cost five grand. Okay, perfect, five grand, great." They go in, and they end up calling you, going, "Oh, actually," or you get to the end of the project, and they give you a bill for seventy five hundred, and you're like, "What the fuck is this?" And they're like. Oh, well, we ran into this, this, and this, and ended up taking more time and whatever. And I'm just like, and it'd be for labor only, you know, it'd be for labor only. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like, you told me five grand. This is your fault, not mine, but we didn't sign a contract. Mm -hmm. So we're fucked. And so, if you were willing to eat the labor, I accept it. And we've, we've ate the labor multiple times. Yeah. Um, we even ate some materials, but try not to. Um, but people that aren't willing to eat anything and they just charge and charge and charge and charge over, dude, at some point, you know, that's bad for your name. You need to take that on yourself, apologize, eat that cost and learn from it. You know what I'm saying? Like eat it and learn from it. So then you're not doing it all the time. And, uh, and that's like when we do floors, right? When we do floors, we actually lose we, we lose money by taking off the trim and putting the trim back on. Yeah. And so we're going to have to add a little bit of price so that we're not losing money. But like it took us like it took us, you know, I shouldn't have took us this long, but it took us like 10 flooring jobs to realize like, oh, dude, we need to double our trim price because we lose money on that trim. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't make. See, and that's where like me being on full time would right coming of handy yeah. yeah but so it's like yeah so we need to increase our our trim prices but like when when i ran my budget and realized what that was i didn't charge the customer more mm -hmm. i just was like oh we made 72 an hour instead of 75 an hour you know so it's like okay well now we know we need to add a little bit for our trim so that we make our 75 an hour yeah um just because you add too many th when you start to add too many things when you let too many things like that lack and you don't learn from it, then your 75, that's at 72, is going to drop to 70, going to drop to 60, you know. So yeah. try to like stay ahead of it so we can keep that what we're making because <clears throat> that 75 an hour we're making on the guys, just like I explained earlier, we got to cover the quoting. We got to cover um, office, office tools. insurance, tools, all that shit. Yeah. So we got to make that 75 an hour on the guys at the job site. Otherwise the rest of the business is going to be how are you paying for the people in the office? How right. are you paying for all that shit? You have to have it happen. Yeah. So. Um, I realize I haven't been reading Andy Graham's lately mm. and you haven't either. I noticed. No. Um, but I thought this was kind of I fitting. I read today's though. I did see that. Um, these two were kind of fitting. Um, beware of the bystander effect. Mm. Which, this is something that, like, I have a huge issue with at work, my job. Uh, a lot of people are just like, well, that's not my job description, so I'm not going to do it. Sure. Uh, we have these, like, big dumpsters that have to be wheeled out to the dumpster area. And I cannot tell you how many people walk past these dumpsters when they're, like, full, overflowing, and they just leave it. They'll just add their stuff to the top of it, have it spill over the floor, and just walk away. So many people or like, uh, because of Brooke leaving, like now I'm kind of more in charge of the supplies. I ordered it before, but now like I have to also like put all, all away and everything. And there was a couple boxes that were like just sitting there for a week. No one touched them. All that was in there was Kleenexes and someone just had to put them away where they're supposed to go. But nope, just left them in the boxes. Mm. And I was just like, Jesus, you guys, like. But, I mean, I've always been that person that if I see something, 
I usually take care of it because I'm just like, I can't just let that just keep going. Well, it's probably how you made it to manager. Yeah. But on the flip side, companies should realize having your manager do those tasks long term. Waste of money. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Like, is it good to set the standard? 100%. But if like the company is not realizing that they need to like have people in charge of that, foolish. Yeah. Foolish, foolish. Um, the other one that I thought was interesting was uh, Bring the Thunder is what he titled this one. Are you attacking the day or are you reacting to the day? Love this. Mm-hmm. First thing on my fucking vision. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he says, if you're attacking, you feel excitement, energy, and alive. If you're reacting, you feel anxious, sluggish, and depressed. Uh, regardless of how you feel, if you execute, shit will happen. If you want to feel great doing it, this simple perspective adjustment will make a massive difference for you. Stop waiting for shit to happen and start imposing your will on the day at hand. You'll win bigger. You'll win more often. You'll feel great doing it. It's not what the day brings you. It's what you bring the day. Bring the fucking thunder. If that doesn't convince you guys to sign, stay, to sign up for Andy Grams, I don't know what will. Yeah, go to andyforsell.com yeah. and uh, sign up for his email, Andy Grams. Yeah, no, dude, that's facts because you know what? We, just, we were talking about that today. You get up and you attack the day mm-hmm. starting at 530. Attack the fucking day. Get your shit done. Snowballs into the, to a great rest mm-hmm. of the day. But it makes sense. Like when you like act like, oh, I have to get this done. Oh, I have to get this done. Oh, I have to get this done. Like kind of like react. You're just like reacting to things. Like, I don't know. It just if you're upset about like doing stuff, you will be more like depressed and whatever. Because reacting is way more depressing than attacking. 100%. Yeah. So my number one thing is be proactive, proactive not reactive. Mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah. Just a little mindset change can help you Big so time. much. Anything else on that sheet? Um, nothing that involves podcast. Sick. All right, gang. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And uh, it's bedtime. That's what we got for you. See ya. Peace.